Thank you, Chris. Again, I'm Jeff Harehold, Director of the West Virginia Division of Energy, part of the West Virginia Department of Commerce. Th this first chart is just a reflection or a depiction of, of where our world coal resources are. Uh, it, it is fascinating when you look at this, you think, you know, here's the, the United States. Uh, the, the, the gray resources represent higher quality coal. The brown resources represent, uh, let's say, sub-bituminous coal. But from this, it's evident that in the United States, uh, we have coal, if you were to add up the three other countries in the world that get their name in the paper for coal issues, China, Germany, and Australia, that we have more coal uh, than those three um, countries combined. Coal is fun fundamental to the state of West Virginia. Uh, 11% 11 of our pri private sector employees, 13% of our state, uh, gross state product, excuse me, and 15% of our state budget. S certainly, you know, just seeing how we all sit on world coal resources, it it's important to, to appreciate the, the relevance of the economies and the relevance of, of how various nations could also f further their economies with, with the use of coal. Uh, Britain, Germany, Italy, Japan, and France together burned 16 percent more coal in 2013 than in 2009 and are planning further increases in the construction of coal-fired power plants. That's Britain, Germany, Italy, Japan, and France. Only the U.S. and Canada of the G7 countries meeting right now in Berlin have reduced coal consumption. Only uh, of the G7, only U.S. and Canada have actually reduced coal consumption. The mercury and air toxic standards was, uh, issue was, rule was issued in December 2011 to reduce emissions of heavy metals including mercury, arsenic, chromium, and nickel, and acid gases including hydrochloric acid and hydrofluoric acid. Interim final rule was issued in 2015 coal and, and oil-fired electric generation units with a capacity of 25 megawatts or greater are affected. Approximately 600 U.S. power plants are covered by, by this standard. And there's a, a map of the uh, units affected by MATS. Economic impact, uh, uh, the use of, of maximum achievable control technology, which is uh, power plants must reduce levels of emission to at least 12% to at least to the least polluting 12% of, of plants currently operating. That, that's what establishes what is the maximum achievable control technology. Uh, National Economic Research Associates predict thousands of West Virginia job losses due to mercury and air toxic standards. Uh, Reliability Council cites 753 electrical generation units to be modified. Uh, Credit Suisse uh, identifies a cost of $100 billion. According to the Institute for um, Energy Research, 72 gigawatts. A gigawatt is 1,000 megawatts. Uh, John Amos at 2,900 is 2.9 gigawatts. 72 gigawatts of coal-fired generation will, will be retired uh, due to the MATS regulations. 72 gigawatts would meet the electrical requirements of 44.7 million homes phenomenal. Every home west of the Mississippi, excluding Texas, 20% uh, of the coal fleet will be infected. Here, here are the, the six MATS closures in, in West Virginia, Appalachian Power, Kamer, Canal River, Phillips Bourne, First Energy, Albright, Reesville, Willow Island, below are the dates when, when they actually closed. Uh, Appalachian Power, the closure date was at the end of last month with First Energy was uh, September of 2012. Okay, and just to, what is 72 gigs? Now, what, what, how do we get a perspective on the, uh, the significance of this? So if you could just bear with me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to flip through 10 pages quickly, which constitutes each, each of the plant that, that, that is closing because of mats.
Okay, on, on this last page, you, you can see the six entries there for the uh, 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 West Virginia plans. It, it, it's a substantial number, and when you, you get the feeling that, you know, being in West Virginia, knowing the six plants, you kind of feel all alone. Well, when, when you see a, a chart depicting all the closures, you know that we're in a much bigger picture. In, in West Virginia, total coal generation is 15,088 megawatts. Closures are 17% of our, our capacity. In PJM, the, the closures are, were 24,000 megawatts uh, predicted. And those, those uh, uh, 24,000 megawatts predicted are 13% out of a PJM um, coal fleet of 183,000 megawatts. We know that uh, West Virginia plays a very str str strategic role in electric generation. We, we uh, only consume 40% of the electricity that's generated in the state. The, the other 60% is exported. Um, we, when you look at who supplies electricity to the grid, who, who is a net energy producer be, beyond their, their in-state consumption, we are number four on that list. Uh, only Pennsylvania, Alabama, and Illinois uh, put more power in the electric grid uh, than we do. Mercury facts, again, that this is they're talking about mats, mercury, and air toxic standards. According to EPA, mercury is a naturally occurring element that is found in air, water, and soil. Mercury is in the Earth's crust. Humans cannot create or destroy mercury. According to the Edison Electric Institute, 55% of the mercury emissions come from natural sources, oceans, volcanoes, forest fires, and another 42% are from human activities. Human activities constitute or include industrial processes such as gold mining, waste incineration, cement manufacturing, fossil fuel combustion, and pulp and paper milling. U.S. power plants produce just 1% of our mercury emissions. Another side of MATS is, is on, our, on our industrial side. Being a, a significant um, coal producing state, our industries have always had access to a, affordable coal. Our industrial sector has a, a traditionally used coal to, to produce energy on site. In 2012, industrial coal consumption, industrial West Virginia ind industries use 9 million tons of, of West Virginia coal. Industrial uh, options were either to uh, adopt in a stack gas scrubbers, low NOx burners, or, or to convert to natural gas. Um, all but one of our coal using industries are uh, electing to convert uh, to natural gas. New power plant rule, okay, the, the existing power, power plant rule is, is uh, the clean power plan. Th this is for new power plants. Uh, this is 111B, existing is 111D. 111B requires that any new coal-fired power plant has to do carbon <coughs> capture and sequestration. Um, there's a, a, a limit being placed on CO2 emissions of, of 1,100 pounds per, per megawatt hour. There's also a limit on natural gas of 1,000 megawatts, 1,000 pounds CO2, excuse me, per megawatt hour. Natural gas emits 1,000 pounds CO2 per megawatt hour, so it's, it is not a a, restri a restriction on the use of natural gas. Natural gas plants will not have to, do, to, to go to carbon capture and sequestration. Uh, new coal-fired plants will. Uh, there's certainly a lot of discussion regarding the economic viability of our current uh, uh, carbon capture and sequestration technologies. Uh, the first commercial-scale CCS plant uh, came online in the fall, uh, in fall of 2014, Boundary Dam in Canada. Boundary Dam is on the boundary with Montana. It's a lignite plant that they can, they've attached CCS to one 600, excuse me, 160 megawatt unit. We, we did ha have a, um, an experiment with uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, plant here in West Virginia. 
uh, the Mountaineer plant. There was a 1% recovery on the plant. There were plans to uh, move that up to, to a 10% recovery. But uh, that, that was at the same time we were discussing the uh, day we, yeah, right. The c Congress was discussing the uh, cap and trade uh, 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 legislation in the House. Um, and, and that, it, it, after that died, it, it did not appear that there was going to be a, a, any carbon markets to develop. Um, now, now for the clean power plan. Uh, I mean, this is called the existing plants rule, section 111D of the Clean Air Act. The goal was to reduce carbon emissions from power sec from the power sector by 30 percent by 2005. Uh, EPA's goal is to, to set uh, pollution per megawatt hour of electricity generated. Uh, West Virginia has 10 remaining um, electric power plants. Uh, the average CO2 uh, emissions from those 10 pa power plants is 2,056 2, pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. Our, our goal we have a 20% goal assigned to us by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Our goal is to reduce that 2,056 pounds per megawatt hour down to 1,620 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour, which is a 20% reduction. E EPA is, um, has what they call building blocks. Um, and initiatives state can take to move this average CO2 production down to, to meet to meet the goal. Energy efficiency and renewable energy are two of their building blocks. But, you know, to either re reduce the amount of energy or to supplant the energy you're, you are producing now with a zero uh, CO2 fuel through energy efficiency. Uh, Building block two, fuel switching, which is pretty amazing. Basically, they, uh, we, we have a um, uh, system. Um, the, 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 the PJM is the administrator of our grid. The P PJM could preferentially dispatch uh, natural gas plants over coal plants. Um, P PJM dispatches on price, the, the, the lower price product lower price power plans, what gets their power in the grid. That this, this uh, clean power plan would allow, or I, I, I guess require the, um, uh, the, the PJMs of the world, uh, PJMs of the United States, to actually call for natural gas, you know, which could, which could be a higher price fuel than, than coal. Uh, building block one is, improving the heat rate, improving the actual efficiency of the coal burn. This is what they call inside the fence. This is the, of all the building blocks, this is the one where people agree that that is the purview of, of, of the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. The other three are not in their purview. The, the, this is uh, what is termed an overreach by, by indicating that they can uh, determine what happens outside the fence. In, in building blocks uh, two, three, and four versus inside the fence building block one. Again, our, our goal, our um, CO2 emissions reduction goal is 20%. This is a chart depicting um, reduction rates around the country. I think Washington State near the, the upper left there is 72% would, would represent a high goal, which, you know, the, the um, Pacific Northwest gets most of their electri electricity off of uh, the federally financed dams. I mean, they have very affordable electric rates, very little use of uh, fossil energy. Uh, the, the lowest uh, percentage comes from Vermont at zero. Uh, uh, Vermont has no generation facilities within their border. Uh, this is the uh, uh, map of the 32 states that oppose EPA's carbon proposal. Uh, obviously, we are not alone. I mean, th this, is, uh, this is something that most states take issue with. You have in New England, which, which probably has electric rates uh, 15 cents to 22 cents a kilowatt hour. You know, uh, 
there could be an issue there of how do we levelize uh, electricity rates? How, how do we assure that we are not at a competitive disadvantage with, with, with electric rates? Uh, there, there was a recent study done by, by the um, Energy Information Administration looking at uh, what, what's the impact of the Clean Power Plan. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the 72 megawatts, 72 gigs, excuse me, that's going to be lost with the, with the um, MAT standard, mercury and air toxic standards. The, the aggregate, when you look at, and that, that's, not, that, that's what this, this first bullet should imply, when you look at the aggregate, given the clean power plan and the, the math standard, there's 90 gigawatts at risk. What, what, what um, the Energy Information Administration is assuming that because in industries will not be able to reach their CO2 goals, an option, or rather, in, in addition to building block one, two, three, and four, will be to, to actually close the coal-fired power plants. Um, and this, uh, when, you, when you look at, you know, the, the, this 90, 90 gigs, I mean, not 90 gigs, you, know, you, saw, you saw what 72 gigs is. I mean, 90 gigs is phenomenal. To think that, that we could forego 90 gigs or roughly one-fourth of our coal generation just, just for, for CO2, for the assumption that, that that's going to improve our atmosphere, that that, that reduction in CO2 is going to make life for us and everybody else better while, while we're putting everything else in our economy at risk is it, pretty amazing. When you look at the, the, this is that study that I referenced with the Energy Information Administration, the, these are the actual numbers that are cranked out. When you look at the, um, the history uh, to 2010, uh, on all the way on the left, 45 percent of our electric generation came, came from coal, 24 percent from natural gas, uh, 10 percent from renewables. You move all the way over here to, to the right, the clean power plan projection, you, you, get, well, you get from a reference case of 34 percent coal down to clean power plan, 26 percent coal. Uh, you're, you're talking about a, this is a 42 percent reduction in coal-based electricity from the original 2010 estimates. A phenomenal, you know, I guess if you're a clean power plant proponent, you'd say they didn't realize how wildly successful that this is going to be. But this is, you know, I, you know, the clean power plant is, is right is now before the. Uh, uh, Office of Management and Budget. I, I can't imagine that this is EI. This is EIA. This is a federal government entity saying these are the reductions we anticipate. Uh, it would be hard for me to imagine that that the Office of Management Budget could look at this and say this is okay. I mean, th th this this is um, for coal states, coal counties, coal communities. Uh, uh, this is devastating. So what is, you know, when, when you look at the clean, the, the mechanics of the clean power plan, you know, we're supposed to, to show this is uh, uh, existing and incremental renewable energy and demand side efficiency. The, the, these are our goals, 10 million, 10 million megawatt hours in um, renewable energy. If, if you were to, and, and one, you know, we have, 2% two, 2 wind in our state, we have 2% hydro. Let's say if you were to look at wind and, and, and with, with your, uh, uh, so just, wind ha has a, a capacity factor of 28%. You know, it, this number here is this 10,273,000 megawatt hours would take 4,200 um, megawatts of wind capacity in the state. We, we currently have 500. Uh, uh, EIA or NREL says we are 50 percent developed when it comes to wind. So, so there seems to be a little uh, difference of opinion at the, with the federal agencies. When, when you look at, let's say, if we were to try to craft a um, clean power plan, you know, what, what, what are our resources? When, when you look at, um, again, the goal, 10, 10 million megawatt hours, 
you look at uh, feasible new wind, we, we have two wind projects that have been approved by the PSC but not developed. Those two wind projects would total 310 megawatts. Uh, feasible new biomass, there's all, in our wood sector has always had an interest in, in wood-fired power plants to use up some, some of the wood residue that's around. We do 150,000 acres of a, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, we do 150,000 acres of t timber production a year. Uh, that 200 there would represent four 50 megawatt uh, wood fire power plants. Feasible new hydro, there's 123 megawatts of hydro applications before FERC. Let's say if you were to do all these renewable energy projects with the, with the goal of t 10 million megawatt hours, you would come up with literally 17 percent of that goal. You know, we, we would be, you know, when, when you look at what, what is feasible wind, you would certainly look, want to look at what are the developers have found in West Virginia to be f feasible wind. When you look at feasible hydro, what, what, what are the developers who are spending money de designing new hydro projects? You would look at that. Um, how, how we would get beyond this 17% to uh, the, the 10 million goal is, uh, is beyond me. There was a, um, a Fitch, Fitch rate, Fitch is one of the three nationally recognized uh, statistical rating organizations along with Moody's and Standard and Poor's. Uh, Fitch ha had an inaugural carbon cost recovery index. Shows that utilities in Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, Mississippi, and West Virginia will face the greatest challenges to, to, to the clean power plan. Carbon reduction related costs are expected to be high in those states due to sizable reduction requirements, high cost alternatives, or both. Uh, Energy Ventures did an analysis by state of, of the clean power plan that their pre prediction is um, our, our electric bills will rise by um, uh, 26 percent. Our gas bills will rise by 60 percent. Gas bills rising because of the, of the emphasis of gas conversions by the clean power plan. And our, our industrial electric rates would rise uh, 34 percent to 8.5 cents, which when you look at the EIA industrial electric rates, that, that would put you at the high end, certainly a place we don't want to be. So that's, thank you very much.